Oh, I think they're about ready to flip. Hold on. Yeah. I am kind of torn because I really want this to be like an original intro, but I also really kind of want to do my classic chair spin. Oh my god, hi. I just bumped into the table and ruined it. <laughs> Let's begin. We're off to a great start. Hello, and welcome to my first ever video like this. This is super exciting for me because I have never done a video like this before in my life, and this is just one of those videos that I kind of wished was on YouTube um, when I first started, when I was new to the game and I felt so overwhelmed and I just wanted someone to give me some very basic structure. Um, and I just really wanted to create a video with like shortcuts and kind of tricks and ways to get over those humps uh, in a better and easier way. So without further ado, let's begin. Number one, let's discuss weaknesses. Um, no one really discusses weaknesses a lot on YouTube, or, or frankly creators in general. Uh, I, people have started doing this, people have started talking about the beginning of their experience and you know the, how they first got introduced into music and stuff like that, but uh, not many people talk about their current weaknesses and what they need help in and how it doesn't stop them. And I just really want to talk about it because for me, my weaknesses were just this barrier to what I wanted to do. They were this crazy mountain that I could never climb. You know, these people around me knew so much more than me and I could never possibly create such intricate creations with such basic pieces of knowledge missing. And I'm here to tell you that that's a fallacy. It's just not true. And you can create any art really. So let's discuss my weaknesses, my own personal white whales in music. Here we go. Number one. Music theory. I, I stink at reading notes. I stink so bad. <laughs> um, I'm terrible at it. And I hear all these other musicians talking and using these fancy words that I didn't know. You know, I'm being perfectly candid. I feel like I should be perfectly candid because I feel like I can still make music, so it's okay. So that's my first weakness. My second weakness is drums. Drums are my Achilles heel. And this was a huge roadblock for me because when it comes to beat and tempo, I have no problem keeping up with the track. I have no problem listening to a tempo and not straying from that tempo. That's not a problem for me. For me, my problem is creating a beat itself and an interesting drum sequence. I just, I am garbage at it. So, you know, I, I'll go into depth a little bit later of how I get over those humps, but those to me are my biggest weaknesses. They are the things that I thought were going to stop me. So let's discuss some shortcuts around some of the stuff that you feel might be stopping your creativity. Okay, so let's start with lyrics. Tips and tricks that will help you write more meaningful lyrics, lyrics that are just much more colorful and frankly, just better. So here are a few tips on how to do that. Number one, create a visual representation of whatever emotion you are trying to portray. About every single person in the world has written a love song, for example. Like, you can say like, oh my gosh, I can't live without you, you're my sun and stars. Everyone said, it's not, who cares? So <laughs> the really amazing songs are the ones that find a brand new way to talk about an emotion that has been talked about a bajillion times. A visual representation of whatever emotion will help you create something that is more enticing. What do I mean by visual representation? I'll tell you. Attribute the five senses, sound, taste, touch, smell, and sight to whatever it is that you are trying to express. For example, if you're feeling stress, what do you imagine would be the texture or the feeling, physical feeling of what stress feels like? If I were to use stress as an example, for me it would feel like probably cracked dirt. Like like if I run my fingers along it, the cracks are coming up under my fingers and, and pieces are coming off. So now we have an image, we have a description that is different than just saying I am stressed. Let's say a smell, uh, for example, what, what does stress smell like? Like really get into personal stuff. For me, it's antiseptic at a hospital. If I smell antiseptic, I, I feel much more stressed than I would feel if I didn't smell antiseptic. From there, you can spiral. You can go from, for example, I told you that texture for me, dirt cracking on the floor and me running my hands against it. That automatically makes me think of things like cracked earth or cracked pavement. Cracked pavement is something that you can use very easily in a song to convey an emotion. And then suddenly you have something that's much more colorful than saying I'm stressed. You can say, um, you know, the pavement cracked under my feet as people walk all over me. That's literally off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, but that's just a really basic example of like how you can spiral from 
one thing to the other. Even, even if it's not the best lyric you've ever heard of, it's definitely better than saying, I'm stressed. Sometimes simplicity is beautiful, but if you're trying to create a very colorful image, visualization helps. Tip number two, create a word bank. The notes app on your phone, whenever you hear an interesting phrase or a word that really catches your eye or just a phrase that, you know, you see something, you decide, oh my gosh, I wanna write that down. Keep a log of everything on your phone, really important, because what's gonna happen is that if you're having complete writer's block and you can't think of anything colorful, you can't think of anything that can describe what you're feeling, you can go into your handy dandy notes and kind of pick up a phrase. You'd be like, oh, that actually works really well for what I'm trying to say. I have like three different notes in this phone, like just completely filled top to bottom with just so many words. So I scroll through it when I'm feeling a little bit uninspired. Tip number three, look for everyday basic phrases or idioms and try and find a way to flip them and use them in a very different way than they're normally used. Uh, what I do is I like to go into Google. I like to Google idioms. <laughs> I will literally scroll down uh, and find something that I'm like, oh, I find this to be an interesting phrase. Depending on what I'm trying to say, I will try and flip it to actually match my situation. If we're using stress and I'm more writing about something specific, like a toxic relationship, for example. I personally love the phrase, every cloud has a silver lining. How would we take that and make that a little bit different? So uh, an example of making that a little bit different would be, I hold onto these silver linings so tight that it burns my skin and turns my knuckles white. For example, rather than just a phrase that you can barely connect to, it becomes something that is happening to you right now. At that point, it's no longer every cloud has a silver lining. You're taking that and you're making it incredibly personal and you're making it an action. You're taking that action and you're making it something that you can feel, that you can, you can imagine happening right now physically, which just creates a sort of strength that wasn't in the phrase before. Tip number four, sometimes simplicity is just more authentic and better. There are moments where you know you want to actually create something that's much more intricate and have people connect a little bit more, but sometimes you wanna say, why the fuck didn't you call? That's just sometimes what you wanna say. And the simplicity of that is incredibly raw and incredibly easy to connect to. So I think the key here is to kind of make a balance, a balance of stuff that is more intricate, that's just a little bit more imaginative. And then the stuff that's just on your mind, the unfiltered feelings that you just wanna get off your chest. Don't underrate simplicity. Simplicity is key. Give it its moment to shine and it can create something really, really beautiful. Tip number five for Lyric, and the biggest cheat <laughs> that people will not admit, and I've seen, I've seen some people admit it, that like, people are like, oh my God, this Lyric is so meaningful. It's just, how did you think of that? And I'll literally just say to them, it rhymed. <laughs> That's it, this is super original. And I'm like, I'm glad you feel that way. It's what I found on Rhyme Zone. <laughs> I will literally go into Rhyme Zone and I will find the trillions of different words that rhyme with whatever I'm trying to say. And from there, I can create something and it will mean something that I never intended it to mean and it'll be super deep and I'll only realize it's deep after I've written it. <laughs> and if you cannot find something that rhymes perfectly. This is my number one thing that I actually didn't know until like a year ago. There is a such thing on Rhyme Zone as near rhymes. You can click on near rhymes and find words that are similar enough to the word to sort of rhyme to it. And this gives you so many more opportunities, you know, if you don't want to rhyme like fun with gun, you know what I mean? You can find near rhymes that will get you close enough and frankly, help you be just much more creative with your lyrics. That is my biggest tip for lyrics. Go into Rhyme Zone. Find stuff that rhymes and have no shame about the fact that you don't know what you're writing, but it's super deep. <laughs> I mean, it was on rhyme zone and it sounded like it rhymed. So I put it in there and I realized afterwards it made sense. <laughs> Let's be real. I'm being real and I'm being completely honest because no one freaking talks about that. They're all like, you know, these are the ways to deeply connect to your lyrics. I'm like, no, sometimes it just has to rhyme and the meaning comes afterwards. <laughs> Those are my basic shortcuts and tips and ways to kind of get over that first initial hump and start writing music. Do not let the fact that you have never created music or you don't know the basics of how to do any of this stuff or structure a song, don't let that get in your way. Don't do it. 
If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to see more. My next vlog is going to be very interesting. I'm not gonna give too much away, but stuff's happening. If you have any tips and tricks on how you write lyrics and the different ways that you do that, please comment down below because I want to read them and learn myself. So definitely do that. I love you guys so much and yeah. Yeah, I closed my eyes under heavy sedation, thoughts racing through my head. Could this be love? <laughs> first to hear that and see that. I'm really sorry, but I just want to show you that that's how I started. That's what I was writing. I was writing really angsty music. <laughs> God, this is so humiliating. Ooh.